Recycle Right. RDS processes uh, recycling uh, from municipal as well as commercial industrial sources. Uh, at the facility I work out of in Roanoke, uh, we process uh, the household materials like bottles, cans, paper, cardboard. Basically take them all in when they're mixed together, sort them out, bail them up and send them to the end vendor to be made into new items. Our RDS is 100% committed in providing an outlet for municipalities to process the material. Um, you know, the municipalities can do the best job in the world collecting recyclables, but if we don't have a material recovery facility and a processing center like RDS here, then it all is for naught. Uh, as a consumer, you know, growing up recycling, I never knew what happened to it after I put it in the bin. And so trying to add transparency, and especially with the people that are skeptical of, of what actually happens to it, a lot of people think it just gets landfilled, but always trying to help educate on, you know, just keeping it simple and, and what to put in their bin. Citizens at home, um, can help us by ensuring that the only thing that they put into their dual stream, single stream uh, containers is materials that RDS can process and can market to an end user to, to make new products. Just some of the crazy things people try to recycle. I mean, we get shoes, clothing, diapers, wigs, belts, hoses, everything you can think of. Because anything that, that, that folks send to us that isn't recyclable, this ends up in the landfill anyway. Plastic bags, if they could keep them out of our recycling, that's a big issue just with the labeling. I mean, it's not all their fault. If they see the, they see the recycle symbol on there, they think it's recyclable with their other products, but those are gonna be the store drop-off because what happens here is it gets tangled into our machinery, uh, and then we also have to front the cost to send things to the landfills. Otherwise, you know, don't bag your recyclables, don't send the plastic bags. It would clean up our stream a lot. We've invested in, in Bolograph equipment, the probably the, the most premier sorting equipment in the world. Uh, our customers come to the tip floor, drop their loads. At that point, we kind of make a salad out of it. So if, if one truck comes in and drops nothing but PET bottles, we mix that in with other material like OCC, uh, old cardboard, mixed paper, aluminum. We deposit all the single string material into the drum feed. The drum feed kind of beats all that material up a little bit and mixes it up. That goes to the initial incline to the pre-sort. Humans pulling out non-recycled material bags, film, uh, bag trash, heavy metals like automotive body parts, that kind of thing. Third step is it goes through an, our OCC screen, which pulls out all of the cardboard. Cardboard goes on to a separate belt, everything else moves along to the fine screen. The fine screen separates all, out all the fines. Glass, bottle tops, straws, forks, knives, and shredded office paper. Fifth step, the French screen separates out two-dimensional material, which is flat material like mixed paper, from three-dimensional material, which would be aluminum, tin, and plastic. A mixed paper goes on, the cardboard takes a 90 degree and drops off into the cardboard bunker. Everything else is moving along to our uh, container line, initiated by a T-Tech, another optical sorter that identifies the material and shoots a little burst of air at a PET bottle and kicks it over onto the PET conveyor. Everything else moves along. The next step is, is a magnet, that picks up ferrous metal and pulls it out of the system and drops it into a bunker. Fiber line has, has moved on. We have robots on the fiber line that pick out non-fiber material like plastic trash and the fiber line drops clean mixed paper into the bunker. So what we have left is aluminum and HDPE, plastics number two. We have two robots on the container line that pick out HDPE one natural and HDPE two colors. You know, really state of the art, innovative technology and, and it's learning as it goes, right? So it, it can identify each item and you, you see it as it goes, you know, picking up on whether it's, it's a different type of fiber, if it's, uh, you know, a different type of plastic, it can identify it as it's coming through really, really fast and, you know, it picks things up. The only thing left is residue and aluminum. We have an eddy current that pulls out the aluminum at that point, so everything is gone except for residue, which is deposited into our overage pile. Once we've gleaned out all the materials that have value and will be turned into raw material to make other products, all that material is staged into bunkers, and when the bunkers become full, we have laser eyes that determine when a bunker's full, we drop the bunker and bail that material in our Bolograph baler. We pull the material, the bailed material off the off the baler and put it into inventory. And I know for me, it was the first tour I took through the facility. You, you know, you start off seeing all the stuff mixed together and you're like, there's no way it's gonna be anything valuable. And then as you get to the end, you see these pristine bales of, you know, the tin and aluminum and, and everything else. And it, you can suddenly kind of envision how, um, what that turns into and how it's given another life. Our residue, what we call residue, is contamination, non-recyclable material. The goal would be 15%, um, and we're at 18.1 in 2020. So if we could reduce contamination by 3%, I think we would all win. It's a great feeling knowing we're diverting um, a lot of material from the landfill. Um, and so that's definitely what drives me, the environmental uh, effect of it. 
and uh, the more we can educate people on that, you know, the, the less trash is going to be out in the environment littering and, uh, and having other impacts. Reducing waste, the future's bright, recycle right.